Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about the VBA object model which relies on classes and objects and we're going to take a look at this from um, the perspective of the person who created Microsoft Excel. So 20 or 30 years ago whenever Microsoft Excel came out I don't know the exact date but there was someone in Microsoft's office who had an idea to make Excel and they had an idea for something that had cells like this and rows and columns and it also had worksheets and you could do things in here like put numbers in here put text and you could do all kinds of functions like sum and all kinds of things like that and so they needed a way to take this idea this this guy in Microsoft's office um, he needed a way to take that idea and put it into an application into code and so what he did is use something called object oriented programming and all that is is using classes and objects to to build an application and so um, the first thing that he did was let's say he looked at the highest level of the Microsoft Excel application which is the application itself and then he drilled down and down further and further until he got to um, this first he drilled down into the worksheet level and then he drilled down into the row level and the column level and the range level until he got to the cell level and he drilled down and down and down and and what he found was all the things he was working with while he was drilling down were objects so for instance the application itself is an object right because the application um, when I say object I just mean it it has properties and it can do things and within that application there's more objects there's worksheets and they have properties Pro when I say properties I mean like names um, they have uh, you know are they open are they closed are they visible you know all kinds of properties and they can do things as well a worksheet can be moved and copied so that's an object a worksheet is an object and then even further um, a row a, a range is an object okay so he, he he felt like you know there's all these objects I have to write some code uh, so that people can do all these cool things in Excel so let me give you an example of, of what he did he used something uh, called a class because in object-oriented programming you use classes and all a class is is a blueprint for an object so I'm gonna write that right here class equals blueprint for an object and an object can be anything it could be your dog it could be the TV it could be your cell phone it could be anything and an object what is an object an object is just an instance of a class so in order to have an object you need to have a class okay and all a class is is a, is, is a blueprint that tells you what your cell phone is or what your dog is or in our case what your app what the Microsoft Excel application is so the guys at Microsoft they wrote a class called application okay so now he has this class application which is a blueprint well what's in a blueprint what's a blueprint well it tells you what an application is and when you write a class the things that tell you what an application is are properties and functions so I'm gonna talk about a couple or one property here and one function here for the application class so the guy at Microsoft um, he noticed that one property of the application is that it has an active workbook and so the guy came up with that at Microsoft the guy said I have an application and I wanted to have a property of active workbook well now he needs to define what that property is right um, and it, he did that in a way that leads to further classes because just like we define a variable as dim at dim x as integer or something like that he defined this property as a workbook as a type workbook and what this means is that um, active workbook is a property that is declared of a type workbook which means 
Just like we declare a variable dim x as string, which means it can hold characters up to 2 billion, this active workbook has is an object of type workbook which has to be defined. So the guy at Microsoft wrote a class called workbook. Okay? And that class workbook, because it's a blueprint for an object, in our case it's a blueprint now for a workbook, um, he it has properties and functions as well. So I'm just going to highlight this because you can see that the guy, the guy at Microsoft started with one application, a class called application, which defines an application. And inside that, he, because the application contains workbooks, he has to define a workbook. So he put a property of a workbook and he decided, well, a workbook needs to have a name. So uh, the name he decided can be of type string. So we know what a string is, right? Because we've seen that before. Um, so that's how that's how the guy at Microsoft who came up with Excel. This is a very basic uh, way of of showing you what he did. He he decided, okay, I want to have an application, so I'm going to write some code. Um, I need to use a class because a class is a blueprint for this application, and within that application, I'm going to have a workbook. Well, then I need to write a a blueprint for a workbook, and here's a property called string. And workbook can also have, uh, the class workbook can have properties and functions as well. So you could have a function here in the workbook class called close. And what this function will do is close the workbook. So um, properties are often considered nouns because they don't do anything. They're just values. Like a name is just a value that you can retrieve and you could set that value. Uh, whereas functions are considered verbs because they, they do actions. They perform they perform an action like closing a workbook or opening a workbook. Back to the application class, let, there's a function in the application class that, that Microsoft wrote um, that is help. And what this does, if when you call this function, it will open up uh, the, the, help, uh, the help window. Okay, so now um, the guy at Microsoft, he, he was pleased with himself. He has an application now it's an it's a it's a class and it has a property and a function and one of those properties is a active workbook property which is of type workbook so he needed to write a class for that and he did so he wrote two classes and they both have properties and functions so now the cool part comes in uh, where he has to let uh, people uh, use all these all these cool classes and these objects and Microsoft Excel made it real easy so what they did is uh, they put all this code in, in a library that comes with Microsoft Excel and it's called the Excel library. So if you just type Excel, um, you're gonna, that, that is, that is gonna allow you to get to this library. Uh, but we don't just want the library, we need the classes inside of it. So to do that, uh, Microsoft uh, guy, he decided, well, in order to get to, um, to, to move further within an object, you just put the dot operator. And this is called the, the dot operator. And what that does is allow you to access properties and functions of an object. So inside of this Excel library, if you press dot, you're going to get all the properties and functions that are within that library. And one of those, uh, one of those properties is uh, the the application itself. So if you do Excel.application, you just access the application class. So now you're at this level. But we want to get to this level. So to do that, we use the dot operator again. And we'll, we'll do the dot. And now we can see that if we do active workbook, here's active workbook. So this here is referring to this property active workbook. So if we, if we double click that, now we're at this level. So now we're inside the class application and now we're at this level, the property active workbook. Now we want to uh, get the name of that workbook. So we have to access the properties of this, uh, this, this object uh, active workbook. When I say object, remember object is an instance of a class. In this case, the workbook is a uh, the workbook is the is the class 
And so we will use a dot operator again, and we will type n, and now we can access this property, name. Okay. And so now we can. The the guy at Microsoft wrote all this code. He put it in a library called Excel, and we can access um, the properties and functions of these objects. And remember, this is an object, the application object. It has a property, and we could access that with the dot operator. And that property is an object. It's an object of the workbook class, and we could access that those properties. Of, of that objects we could access the, the properties of that object by doing the dot operator again and then we access the name property and so then we can deal with all these objects and all these classes very easily by using this dot operator and just um, working with the objects that, that Excel gives us we don't have to write all the code they already wrote all these codes and the, all, all the classes and codes so that's why VBA is so easy to learn and so easy to use is that you don't have to do the, the heavy lifting. Excel did it for you. All you have to do is access the objects and access the methods and, and the properties. They're all there already. You don't need to really write anything. You're just sort of accessing and playing with the objects. So now we can, for instance, um, I'm going to put cells 1, 1, dot, 1, 1 dot value is equal to the name of the workbook and if I run this you'll see it works and there's the name of the workbook object module and classes but notice one thing that this cells is actually um, part of um, it's part of the application right so if we do application you'll see that it actually has the property cells and so what you can do is you can write all this, you know, you can start at the very top and go, okay, we're in the library. And then we go into the application class. And then we use a dot operator and go into cells. And then you could you do it that way, but you don't need to. You don't need to fully qualify um, the object. So cells is an object in application, right? And it's a range object because because we can access its property so every time you see a dot you're accessing a property or a, a function but you don't need to write um, a fully qualified object from the very start of the, the highest level right we could delete this and you could just write write cells dot value cells one one dot value because Microsoft Excel by default it it knows that you're in Excel and it knows that you're in application so it assumes that you wrote all this stuff so you don't need to write all this stuff okay so that is a, a brief introduction to what is a class and an object